Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. Today I'm gonna to be trying my first ever puzzle from the brand Falcon. So Falcon are part of the brand Jumbo, which also make puzzles and games and other things. And from what I understand, they are based in the Netherlands. Um, so I've done a Jumbo puzzle before, but a really long time ago, and it's like a really old puzzle. So I'm sure like their pieces have probably changed like a lot since then. Um, and also I, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure if Falcon and Jumbo, even though they're owned by the same company, share the same piece quality or not. So for today, we're just gonna focus on Falcon as its sort of own individual brand. Maybe another time I can do a new Jumbo to sort of compare, but um, yeah, today we'll focus on this one. So um, this one's actually part of the Falcon Contemporary series, which seems to have a lot more kind of colorful, vibrant, more modern, and I guess contemporary designs. Um, whereas some of the other designs I've seen previously for Falcon have been more like maybe traditional sort of images or more like realistic animals and flowers and things, which wasn't quite my style. Um, yeah, so when I saw this one and another one, I decided to grab them because they just looked really fun and colorful. And I figured this one looked like a really fun one to do today. So this one's called Life in Lockdown. And yeah, basically features um, this lovely gradiated dusk skyline and it's got all these uh, silhouettes of like apartment towers. And then, yeah, you can see into the windows of all the different apartments and there's all sorts of fun activities going on. Um, so we've got here someone making a multi-tiered cake, um, someone exercising, cute little dog. Uh, what else have we got? We've got people, someone celebrating their 40th birthday on their lonesome by the looks of it. And we've even got a bit of risque life painting happening up here and there's even a cute little pizza shop down the bottom so yeah there's a lot of really fun cute things going on like a lot of details so i think this one's gonna be really fun to do um, i'm hoping that the piece quality and the puzzling experience is like gonna be really good to sort of match the like you know i guess the beautiful design um, so i figure in a sec we'll like do look at the packaging and unbox this and have a look at the pieces and then get into puzzling. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the packaging and then we'll open it up. So the front, as you saw before, just has the image on it and then um, has these nice little sleek kind of colored bubbles which have like uh, Falcon Contemporary and 1000 piece puzzle and then it just has the name of the puzzle and the artist. And then the sides sort of have pretty much similar information, the same sort of information here repeated along with part of the image and then a tiny picture of the whole image. Um, and that's pretty much the same for this side, but just different colors and yeah, the same for this side. And then the other side, which is I guess the bottom of it is, has sort of more of the, I guess, company information. So like barcode, it's got Jumbo here, that they're in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, and just other, their address and that sort of thing. And then on the back, um, they sort of briefly talk about the contemporary puzzle range, just sort of saying that they're more like modern designs and that sort of thing. And then um, it talks about their piece quality. And I think it actually mentions, um, I'm sure I read it that they, oh, that's right. It talks about the contemporary puzzles themselves. This range says they use only 100% recycled cardboard cut with the thinnest knife possible to produce a seamless look. So that's interesting to know. And um, they apparently the boxes are more of a compact size and they don't use any shrink wrap. So they're trying to be a bit more like environmentally friendly and sustainable and that sort of thing. So that's really good. Um, yeah, and just a bit about the quality also has a blurb about the artist. And then here it kind of features some of the other puzzles in this contemporary range. So. Yeah, they look pretty colorful, the other ones. Um, yeah, might have to, I have this one here, but I might have to try out the others if I like this one, so yeah. So, the box, like I said, it doesn't have any shrink wrap, but it does have these little plastic seals. I think you sort of, if you've done Buffalo games, a lot of, uh, some of their puzzles will have that. Um, not all, but a few do. So, I've got my scissors here so we can sort of open it up. If I can, let's see. 
I'm not sure how easily that'll peel off. Oh, it does seem to peel off pretty easily. Yeah, peels off pretty easily. Like, doesn't seem to be too sticky, so that's kind of good. I, I'm now left with some plastic, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that. We'll put that there. Um, I do, it's a bit of a pet peeve, I guess, when, you know, you try and take these plastic bits off because you want your box to look nice and then it leaves, like, sticky residue. So, yeah, so kind of good that it doesn't seem to, at least. So, that's good. All right, so let's open this up. Um, so, yeah, just sort of plain cardboard on the inside of the lid and yeah pretty yeah plain on the inside of like the bottom part of the box and the pieces just come in what looks like a non sort of reusable plastic bag um it would have been nice if like since they're trying to be a bit more environmentally friendly if they could at least provide like a ziploc bag so you could reuse it like especially if they're gonna have some plastic in here um feel like it's a little wasteful to sort of have a disposable kind of bag um, but I feel like a lot of companies like that so it'd be nice to sort of see that change like overall in the sort of puzzle world if we can see more reusable plastic or fabric bags even um, you know a lot of companies do seem to be going in that direction which is good but uh, I feel like a lot just sort of have a kind of made their way over to doing that yet so see what happens in the future i guess so yeah uh before i pull these out yeah they do look pretty standard like ribbon cut and very like pretty thick so let's sort of pour them out have a bit of a look so there's definitely a little bit of puzzle dust that's like left in the bag um so yeah, I don't think these are gonna be dust free by any means, um, but you know, that's okay. I think a little bit of puzzle dust is fine, but we'll sort of have to see like during the puzzling experience, how much dust is actually gonna be. Um, and there's like a few sections here that seem to be sort of stuck together. They, oh, they come apart pretty easily, I think, yeah. Um, yeah, it seems like they are cut all the way through these ones. They just hadn't broken apart for some reason. Um, anyway, so these look pretty nice. Um, yeah, they're quite very standard shapes. Um, yeah, sort of like your very standard ribbon cut. I feel like they're like maybe a fraction smaller than something like Ravensburger. Like pretty similar though, um, like in, in shape and size, I guess. Um, yeah. And then the back is just like a I guess a gray board like sort of a grayish bluish cardboard so there's no like paper backing or anything which I prefer anyway and then the yeah the thickness is yeah they're pretty kind of chunky a little bit chunky like they look uh, pretty sturdy so I'll just put those down but yeah they oh, they're a little bit bendy actually I thought they'd be like I mean I don't think they're gonna like easily get damaged or bend on their own like I'm looking through these I haven't seen any like bent or damaged pieces so I think they're sturdy enough to sort of not get too damaged like in the box but I can still sort of bend the little tabs a bit if I wanted to like they're not so hard that I I can't bend them um, but they feel pretty sturdy um, yeah and pretty thick and then the top is actually a really kind of nice I guess a linen finish it has that sort of a little crisscrossy kind of texture and there is a bit of I wouldn't necessarily say gloss like a bit of a sheen so um, yeah if I tilt this in certain light it becomes a little harder to see the color and the image on the piece um, so that could pose a problem like with some of my lighting I might find it hard to see the pieces under certain lights or from certain angles so we'll have to sort of see how that goes um, but yeah, in terms of like the colors of the pieces, like the printing, it looks looks like it matches the front of the box. Um, like it, the, the box colors are not overly like super popping or vibrant, to be honest. They're kind of a little bit more, I guess, toned down and muted, but still colorful. Um, yeah, so the pieces seem to match that. They, they seem um, like bright enough or printed well to sort of match what's on the front of the box. 
Um, yeah, and the details look really clear, like it doesn't look pixelated or anything. I can see a lot of very clear details here. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, these look pretty nice. And I mean, yeah, there's a few stuck together, but they don't, it seems like the cardboard is cut all the way through. They just, for whatever reason, haven't fully separated, but they seem to come undone pretty easily. So, but that's not unusual with puzzles. Um, yeah. So I'm just trying to see if there's like much puzzle dust. I can't see too much. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what my puzzle board looks like after puzzling or during puzzling. So anyway, um, yeah, I, these seem pretty nice. I'm definitely looking forward to sort of playing with these and putting the puzzle together and seeing how well they hold together and uh, like, yeah, what the fit's like and what the general quality is like and how much of an issue this sort of glare is going to be. Um, so in terms of like my strategy, I don't have too much of one. Um, to be honest, looking at this image, I'm kind of tempted to start doing the sky just because it's a bit of a gradient and, you know, I, I feel like I need to do the gradient first. Um, I feel like that might be reasonably, I might, you know, go back on my word, but for now I feel like the gradient sky might be fairly easy to do. And I think maybe doing the edges is possible as well. Like there might be some parts along the bottom that could be a bit tricky if it's just all black, I'm not too sure. So I might see if I can do that. Um, if it gets too difficult, I might come back to it. But apart from that, I'm not too sure really how I'm gonna approach these apartment windows. It might just be sort of a matter of, you know, picking up a piece and actually just looking at the box, see where it is and kind of just roughly placing it until I like build up those sections more. Um, Cause I feel like it's quite a detailed puzzle when you get into the, the apartment blocks. So um, yeah, so that's my very uh, loose strategy and we'll sort of see how it goes. I mean, if I figure out a sort of better way to go about things, I'll, I'll change things up. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my plan of attack for now. So uh, let's, yeah, let's get into some puzzling then.
I'm back after a couple sessions of puzzling and it's actually taken me pretty a pretty long time to get to this point, about four and a half hours or four hours and 45 minutes, something like that. So yeah, it's definitely been fairly slow going and I think that's probably more to do with how I approach the puzzle rather than the puzzle itself. Although the puzzle is like the image is a little bit tricky and fairly detailed, but I think, um, yeah, starting with the gradient, trying to fill that in and figure out where it goes in between the buildings was maybe a slower way to go. And also even trying to do the, the border, which as you can see, I haven't even finished yet. Um, I think that was a bit of a slow, slow option. So yeah, I think maybe doing the actual apartment blocks first and then filling in the sky and gradient might have been a better option, but here we are. Um, but uh, apart from that, like I'm quite happy with how it's turning out. I feel like I've definitely, like it's definitely coming together and I've, it's definitely gotten faster as I've gone along and it's, yeah, it's starting to look really cute and take shape. Um, and yeah, I'm actually quite enjoying the quality. Um, there's been like a few little issues, like in terms of the fit, there's been a few false fits, especially in the sky area where there's been some similar shaped pieces and very similar shades going on. Um, so that's been, yeah, there were yeah, a couple or a few little uh, incorrect fits, but you know, over time, as I tried to puzzle around the area, I soon realized they didn't go there. So that was fairly easily sorted, but just something to note. And also um, there's been a, like, even though the pieces aren't glossy, there's a bit of, I guess, a sheen to it. So like at the moment, my light, the way it's shining on the puzzle, I can't see these areas up here all that well, um, but down here I can. Um, so I think it just really depends on, you know, like everyone's own like puzzle setup, how they have their lighting, whether it's daylight, etc., etc., as to if you'll have problems with that or not. But again, I guess something to note. And another thing um, I mentioned that there was a bit of puzzle dust when I like after pouring the pieces out of the plastic bag, but actually there's barely any, like I can see a few sort of specks here and there, but I definitely didn't feel like I had dusty hands afterwards. And yeah, the puzzle board for the most part is pretty clean. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, that definitely, yeah, pleases me. Um, just one less thing to worry about, I guess. Um, but yeah, as for the fit, like apart from some false fits, I feel like the sections like hold together, like the pieces hold together pretty well. So definitely like it's holds together well enough for the puzzling experience. Um, but yeah, like seems pretty sturdy. Um, like even this bit, pretty good. And then even if we break off like a little, a bigger bit, let's see. Yeah, seems to like, you know, it, it breaks eventually, but you know, it's gonna hold together well enough for you to like transport a section from in front of you to somewhere else on the board, I guess. So yeah, quite happy with that. Um, I don't know, we might, might be able to do a puzzle pickup. We'll have to have to see. Um, but yeah, I feel like, especially with a puzzle like this, which has all these little sections, being able to do that is really helpful. Um, yeah, so apart from that, like, yeah, I, I don't think there's too much else to add. I guess the only sort of other thing was, I was trying to think what these pieces reminded me of. And so I went through like some of my different puzzles that I have from other brands and like was trying to see if it like replicated those, but I couldn't find like an exact exact replica of these pieces. But I sort of looked at Gibson's, Cloudberries and Schmidt. And I feel like it's a little bit similar to all of them. There's like definitely like, it seems to be similar thickness and piece size to a lot of those brands and the fit is pretty similar to a lot. So I feel like if you like any of those brands, you'd probably like this brand. Um, it's, I actually feel like this is a bit better than Cloudberries and Gibsons in the sense that um, the problem I have with those two is because I'm actually working on a Gibsons at the moment is when you have all the pieces mixed in the box, they tend to get really wedged together and you have to spend a lot of time like undoing them but i didn't find that at all with this so i feel like that's a definite bonus um so in a sec um i'm gonna get back into puzzling and hopefully it'll only take like another session 
like well a, a good a reasonable time session to just finish this off um, and then we'll come back and have a final sort of chat about it all So I'm back and I've finished the puzzle and I really love how it's turned out. Um, that last session took me about two and a half hours, so all up I think I spent just over seven hours on this puzzle, which is I guess a pretty reasonable amount of time for a very sort of detailed 1000 piece puzzle. Um, but yeah, I really had a fun and enjoyable experience putting this together. Um, I was finding things a little bit slow going and a tad frustrating at the beginning, but I sort of put that down to my choice of how I went about this puzzle. So I think doing the gradiated sky first was probably a harder way to do this puzzle. So I think if I was to do it again, or if you know you were gonna do it, maybe consider doing the like, or the apartment towers first, and then, and then you know filling in the gaps with the sort of sky pieces. I think that would be an easier way to do it. Um, but apart from that, I really had fun um, discovering like all the cute little details and weird and wonderful activities going on. Um, and also I just want to mention that as well as the details in the apartments, there's a lot of details in the sky too. So there's like a helicopter up here, there's someone with a telescope, there's a moon, there's little trees with fairy lights. So there's like definitely like lots of little details as well. So I like that that's been included in this image not and not just the uh, apartment towers. But speaking of which, um, yeah, there's like so many fun, cute things going on. So like I mentioned earlier, there's like some cats and dogs and there's even a lady here doing yoga with the cat standing on her back. Um, there's also some like fun, weird little lockdown things like there's a man in this apartment with a t-shirt that says get me out and you know even interesting things like the pizza shop down here I realize they're making pizza but they've actually got their sort of seats and tables packed up so I guess they're just doing takeaway and delivery for lockdown and then you have some other weird things like someone being very underdressed in this apartment and then the neighbors laughing and pointing at them and then the other neighbor seems to be a bit of a peeping Tom where they've got their lights off and they're looking through binoculars. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of, you know, a mix of cute things, quirky things, and maybe a little bit creepy too. But the one thing that's my favorite is over here, there's actually uh, people working on this exact jigsaw puzzle in their apartment. So I thought that's a very fun, cute little detail to include. So that, that was my favorite, I think. So um, yeah, let's talk about, I guess, the quality. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the quality. Um, I mentioned there were a few false fits at the beginning, but I didn't find any more 
like uh, in this last session, I didn't have any issues with fit at all. Um, and yeah, the pieces just fit really comfortably together, not too loose or tight. And you can definitely pick up large sections. I think you could probably even do a puzzle pick up with this if you wanted. Um, but I guess the main thing is that it means you can pick up reasonable sized sections of the puzzle and move them around, which I find really helpful so I can work on things in front of me and then put them where they need to go later. Um, so yeah, that's super helpful when you're puzzling. Um, and in terms of like things that are possible cons, um, puzzle dust, well, it didn't, didn't really end up being an issue at all. Like this puzzle board is virtually spotless. Um, my hands feel fine, you know, um, yeah, it just really end up being a non-issue. So that's great. Um, but yeah, I think the one thing that was a bit of a con for me is that there is a bit of, from my lighting, a bit of gloss or sheen happening. So there's sections of the puzzle like up here and even in front of me here that are hard to see with the light sort of blocking out the color or the image of the puzzle. So I have to sort of move around a bit to see what's going on. Um, so that was a little bit of a problem for me. It made puzzling a little bit more tricky. So I think that's just something to note and it may not happen to everyone. It really just depends on what your puzzling setup's like and what lighting you're working under. But yeah, just something to be aware of could be a problem for you. Um, you just sort of have to maybe play with your lighting and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, apart from that, um, yeah, nothing else that bothered me. I just had a really good time with it. And yeah, speaking of the quality, like I mentioned earlier, I, yeah, I really do think this is sort of somewhere in the range of like Cloudberries, um, Schmidt and Gibson's. They're the sort of brands that kind of come to mind. And when I had a look in my collection seemed to be the most similar. Um, it's not exactly the same as any of them, but it sort of feels similar to those kind of puzzle brands. Um, it's not really at all similar to Ravensburger, but that being said, I enjoy Ravensburger and I enjoy this and I would consider both of these brands to be pretty good quality. They're just different. Um, so I can't really say if you like Ravensburger, if you're for sure gonna like this, but I mean, if you just enjoy good quality in general, I think you'd appreciate the Falcon quality. So yeah, so when it comes to price, um, so I grabbed this one from Amazon. Um, I think it was like in the low 20s, so like maybe 22, $23. I'll pop the exact price um, in Australian dollars that is, and also the US equivalent on the screen somewhere. Um, and I'll link to the Amazon page down below. Um, but for that price, I think this level of quality and a really nice image is definitely uh, like totally acceptable and great for that price. So I think, yeah, like, I think that's a very affordable price and um, yeah, I don't have any problems with it. I think that's a great price point. Um, I don't know how much these retail in store, like I've never really, oh, I have seen some of the more traditional style Falcons in store in Australia. So um, I'm pretty sure they were sort of probably between the $25 and 30-ish dollar mark in Australian dollars. So. I think even for that price, which is a little bit higher than what Amazon was, it's still pretty reasonable. Um, so would I recommend Falcon? I, yeah, absolutely. I really had a great time in this puzzle. Um, I love the image. I'm really looking forward to doing the other couple of Falcon puzzles from the Falcon Contemporary series that I grabbed off Amazon as well. They're both really fun, colorful ones too. Um, yeah, really looking forward to it because it's just, I don't know, such good quality and just a really interesting image. So yeah, I definitely recommend this. Um, yeah, especially if you are a fan of like, you know, Schmidt, Cloudberries, Gibsons, I think you would really enjoy this. And yeah, I think you're getting a lot of like value for your money as well. So I guess in the comments below, let me know what you thought of this puzzle. Have you done this one or have you done a lot of Falcon puzzles before? And what do you think of them? Like, do you like the quality? Um, how would you, rate the quality and you know what would you compare it with like what other brands sort of uh, do you think it's similar to or do you not like the falcon puzzles and if so why 
So um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And for even more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.